So the next stage in creating our block is to transfer the pattern onto the block. You have to do two things. You have to size your pattern down, which I'm just going to tear off the sides of my pattern for lining it up on the block. And I'm going to leave the top and bottom for taping it, but I'm going to fold the edge so that I know exactly where it should be on the block. I need to cut this block down to my six by seven and a half, which is what I made my pattern for. So I'm just going to mark it. And I'm going to cut it with just my straight X-Acto knife. Again, I'm cutting this down. I'm going to check all my corners to see if I should be cutting off. And I want to do this one at six. Okay, so now I've got my block cut to size. Just going to look at my image on it. And now I'm going to do a graphite transfer. It's pretty simple. I like to put on my gloves because I can keep the area cleaner that way. Then I'm going to really push it and rub it into the paper with the my glove. I can really burnish it. That's another good thing about wearing these. And once I have it well burnished, I can grab my block. I'm going to fold the lower edge of this too. line it up and I'm going to tape it down to my block. I'm going to use some scotch tape. Make sure it's nice and snug. And now by pressing down the pen, I can transfer my design onto my block. I don't want to press too hard, just hard enough to transfer the graphite and not dent the block. Some areas I'm only going to just do The edge, I'm not going to fill it all in solid, but if you're worried about keeping track, you can kind of just do a little stroke to show where areas are supposed to be solid. At some point you're going to want to check and see how your transfer is doing. So not too badly.
Once you've transferred the design, you may want to go back over top of it with a thicker marker. This will give you a sense of how thin a line you can get in key areas. For example, I know that my canoe edge line will need to be about the thickness of a marker to stand up to multiple inking as I get my addition of prints. So I just want to make sure that I understand how thick lines to need to be, where they're going to be solid, and then I can go on to my next stage of cutting. So your pattern is transferred and now you have to start to think about how you're going to cut your block. What you want to do is plan out the areas that are going to be solid white that you're going to cut away cleanly and then think about how you might want to use texture or mark making in some of your other areas. This particular design really lends itself to thinking about mark making, especially in the water and in the, uh, the foliage, in the forest parts. And even in this foreground, this beach area doesn't have to all be cut away cleanly. It could be cut away in a way that gives it a textured element that feels like the beach. So I know I want my shadows to be solid. And I know I want my white of my canoes to be quite crisp and quite bold. What I want to do is I want to start, uh, or what I like to do, is start by cutting away the areas that I know I want to be cut away as solid white. And from there, I'm going to start to add texture to the design. I'm going to cut using a chip carving method for cutting those solid areas away. For this kind of method of cutting, you use a exacto knife or any other kind of straight edge and you cut straight down deeply the area that you want to be pure white. I'm going to be careful here because I can see there's a little area of black that I would like to have on this canoe as a mark. My cutter comes with a variety of different gouge blades. So I've got my little triangular one in here. And what I can do is I can use that on the smaller parts. You just basically cut up to, that's why they call it chip carving, to your line and it should just come away. Going pretty deep because I want to ensure that this is clear white. On my block. So I'll continue to cut this away all the white areas, and then I'll start to look at texture.
So something that you're going to want to start to blend into your block as you cut is texture achieved by the little bits that you're using on your cutter. You've got, uh, with this set, a V-groove, a smooth, and a curved blade, which are going to allow you to add some different textures in. For example, I do want to cut away my sky as almost solid white, but I want my tree line to have that ragged appearance of trees. So I'm actually going to use my V-groove and cut right up and leave those little bits of texture. Once I've got that texture in place, I'm going to switch out my, my blades and I'm going to put my larger curved blade on, changing my blades just by loosening and tightening the handle. And I'm going to come back through smoothing this off for my sky. And I might even leave some elements in the sky. If I want to start to see how that texture is looking, a nice thing to do is to start to Lay a thin coating of graphite down on your block and you can start to actually see the kind of textures that you're getting out of that kind of irregular treatment. So now I'm just going to try using the same sort of treatment in my water to create some texture. So the final bit of texture that I want to show you before I just finish cutting the block is I'm going to put on my smallest V-groove. And I'm just changing my blades off and on. And with this, I can almost get kind of a pointillism effect. I'm going kind of deep because I know when I ink it up, my texture's too light. It'll just fill up with ink and I won't get the effect that I want. So I can start to see how that texture is going to build up and give another kind of quality to the block. So, so even though the block is eventually going to be just black and white, the texture is going to give it visual complexity beyond just the cartoon cutout. So once I finished my initial cut, I'm going to go on to my next stage, which is inking up my block. 